uh, I'm going to talk about uh, uh, the topic. It's, uh, uh, it's cosmology from condensed matter physics. So, and uh, I will mostly talk about the out of equilibrium phenomena related to uh, cosmology and how one can apply in the context of cosmology. And I will actually uh, comment on few more results that we have obtained and we are doing some more calculation regarding this uh, 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 particular method. So we did some calculation in this paper which is quantum out of equilibrium cosmology which is published in this year. Uh, as well as this is another paper which we will, uh, this is related to the same stuff. And uh, one more with some result related to random matrix theory, uh, but yeah, this kind of result also can be used uh, in the context of cosmology as well. I, I will show how that can be done. Apart from that, I just want to introduce one of my group where a lot of students are working from different, different places and uh, they are associated with this work also. And yeah, these are the students. And this is the group, this quantum aspects of space, time and matter. And uh, the key references of this work based on this four references. This is uh, a very famous paper by Maldasina, who actually pointed actually a bound on quantum chaos. This is one paper where uh, people tried to uh, understand few things in the context of cosmology. And if you want to know about random matrices, this is a very good book. And uh, like I will also talk about some applications where we need the uh, information about Fokker Planck. So if you want to know about the Fokker Planck, this is also a very good book. And uh, like I will talk about few uh, out of equilibrium phenomena. So one of the possible uh, physics is coming from this out of time ordered correlators. And if you don't know, and uh, if you want to compute it for the quantum mechanics, you can actually consult this paper. It's a very good paper. And there are many more. Like if you want to understand how this physics of out of time ordered correlation uh, applied to uh, many, many places, you can consult this kind of references as well. And I will also talk about a particular phenomena called quench, where this, we, uh, we actually have followed this kind of references. And uh, you can actually look into this references. And these are very old papers by Calabrese Cardi, where uh, they have actually trying to understand this phenomena of quantum quench in the context of quantum field theories and conformal field theories. So these are a few papers by them. And last but not least, I just want to point a few books which we actually have referred and studied during this calculation. And this is related to the non-equilibrium quantum field theory stuffs. And like there are many other applications in something called open systems. And I will talk about what is open system at the end of my talk. I will not talk about it right now. But yeah, these are many more books you can actually follow. Now this is the outline of my talk. I will start with a general introduction. Then I will uh, uh, connect it with cosmology through some conduction where phenomena. I will uh, explain why this is connected. Then I will talk about the dynamical time dependence uh, in the context of cosmology, how the couplings, time dependent coupling play important role. And uh, in co uh, condensed matter physics, this particular phenomena can be identified through quench. And also, I will uh, talk about the out of time ordered correlation functions that I have already mentioned in the context of QFT and also in the context of random matrix theory. And I will show how these ideas can be actually connected to cosmology somehow. And last, I will uh, comment on this Fokker-Planck equation. Uh, 
and how that can be a probe to understand the cosmological correlations that I will also come in. And finally, I will conclude with future prospects. So let's start with a general introduction. Now, quantum fields uh, in an inflationary background or during reheating uh, gives rise to burst of particle production, which has been extremely, extensively studied in the context of cosmology. Such phenomena has been compared to the scattering problem in quantum mechanics. Uh, this is basically uh, can be studied with a specific effective potential arising due to the impurity in the conduction well. Now, it is important to note such particle production events are completely random or chaotic when the evolution is non-adiabatic in nature. Now, this non-adiabatic change in the time-dependent coupling of the fields uh, uh, which is actually coming from the path integrating out heavy degrees of freedom from the UV complete theory, which you do, any kind of UV complete theory you may have, as the background evolution of the field passes through spatial points in the field space produces this burst of particle production that I'm pointing. There lies a one-to-one -one correspondence between such cosmological events to that of stochastic random phenomena occurring in mesoscopic systems where fluctuation in physical quantities play a significant role. For massless scalar field gets thermalized and due to the effective time dependent interaction, one can actually identify this thing uh, with the particle production in the context of uh, cosmology as well. Now you can ask me several questions. How exactly conduction where cosmology correspondence can be built? Also, you can ask me how the out of equilibrium phenomena quantify randomness. Also, you can ask me how the physics of out of equilibrium affects the cosmological correlations. And if you don't know anything about the effective interactions, that time dependent couplings in quantum field theory, then how one can able to quantify randomness. And lastly, you can ask me that in terms of statistics, interpretation of this stochastic dynamics of cosmological perturbation, uh, particle production, how that can be done. So these are five crucial questions which I am going to uh, understand through my study. And, uh, Let's start with uh, uh, this uh, particle production phenomena. It can be done in using two ways. I will do it right now for the closed systems, but this can be done for the open systems as well. So in the context of closed systems, you can identify this uh, phenomena uh, with many, many things which are actually connected to each other. So like uh, uh, I am trying to talk about uh, something called Lyapunov exponent, which, which actually me measure the deg degrees of freedom, uh, degree of chaoticity in the dynamical system. Also, this, uh, this is actually connected to the random scattering events happening during the particle production. And uh, uh, like uh, how the correlation, so in the context of this uh, out of equilibrium physics, we try to call this uh, correlations as the spectral form factor Y, I will mention later. But yeah, we are going, going, uh, going to understand this part. But apart from this, if the system is interacting with the environment, and if there is a non-adiabatic interaction takes place, you can also study uh, this kind of uh, particle production phenomena in the open quantum system context as well. So, yeah. So let's start with this conduction where to cosmology correspondence. So in uh, this is kind of a conduction where I, I have uh, shown. And uh, here, if you want to study the, so if you have an impurity potential like V, then you can write down something called Schrodinger equation. And similarly, in the context of cosmology, you can write down something called the fluctuation equation, where these five k's are the modes 
associated with the fluctuation. M square tau is some kind of time dependent effective mass. And uh, the correspondence is here. Like here, the x is basically corresponding to the conformal time tau here. Potential is basically minus m square tau time dependent mass parameter. Wave function is basically the mode function in the Fourier space in cosmology. Number of scatterers can also be identified as the number of non-adiabatic events and so on. There are lots of other things. Uh, yeah. So here just I have uh, like shown the solution of the wave function for a given uh, uh, impurity potential. Here you see that the, uh, this is the behavior of the uh, wave function uh, for that particular uh, impurity. It's scaled with something called xi. This xi is the, some kind of localization length of the uh, wave function. And uh, similarly, in the context of cosmology, you can actually find out some solution, but uh, where you see that sign actually changes because of this correspondence that I have mentioned earlier. But yeah, it looks similar. That I want to mean. Now, uh, this I just uh, remind you about the scattering problem uh, with impurity in conduction where it's very well-known phenomena. Consider a single impurity localized at the uh, position at x equal to xj. Then you can construct a left and right-handed impurity potent, uh, so solution out of that. And uh, uh, if, if you see that, uh, if you solve the Schrodinger equation, it looks like this, where beta can be left or right. Now, using this solution, actually you can uh, calculate the relationship between the uh, solution obtained in the left side and the right side through Broglie of transformation. So this uh, can be accounted, this how this uh, right side thing is uh, related to the left side. And this mj is some kind of a transfer matrix, which actually gives you this, uh, um, the entries of this matrix actually uh, related to the Bogolyubov of coefficients. And this tj, rj, rja uh, reflection, uh, this is the reflection coefficient of this uh, localized uh, impurity at the jth position. And tj is the transmission coefficient of this uh, uh, impurity. Now, if you have n number of impurity, then you, what you do? You actually multiply this, all the transfer matrices from the back, back side, and you will get the total, total transfer matrix. Now, just uh, for simplicity, let us consider n equal to 2. If you have n equal to 2, then the total, num uh, total transmission probability can be written in this way, where capital T is defined, uh, this uh, capital T1 and capital 2 is defined as T star T mod T squared, R is mod R squared, and J for 1 and 2, because I have considered two impurities. Now, if you average over the uh, this angle theta, then you will see that the contribution of this part actually goes away. And actually, you can write down this log, uh, log t, or averaged over all theta in, in a simplest manner. Now, this can be actually written as minus n times gamma, where this n is this number of scatter, uh, scatterer or impurity present uh, in this uh, quantum mechanical system. And this gamma is called the Lyapunov exponent. And you can actually calculate something called uh, localization length of the wave function. And uh, this particular localization in uh, condensed matter theory is called the Anderson localization. You can actually compute how much your wave is localized inside the conduction wave. Now, so th uh, this I have given how the scattering phenomena happen inside the uh, conduction wave. Now I will uh, connect it to the uh, dynamical time dependent of the time dependence of the coupling parameter present in the theory. Like here I have uh, shown there is something called m square tau, which is the effective uh, mass parameter. So 
uh, see it's a, uh, like a uh, field uh, where your mass is uh, time dependent and it's minimally coupled with the gravity now you can actually uh, write uh, take the fourier transform of that and uh, you can redefine your field if you redefine then you can actually uh, write down this uh, equation, the Fourier transform the equation in a little bit simpler form. And you can actually compute the equation of motion. And it's very easy to calculate the equation of motion. Now, uh, if you take the, uh, this mass of the particle uh, have uh, the value uh, is much, much greater than the Hubble scale, then you can actually neglect this type of contribution, this expansion. Then uh, it's basically nothing but d square dt, uh, d, d, d2 dt2 plus this factor because the, you have neglected this contributions. And see, this is nothing but the old thing I am talking about where, yeah, it's nothing but this equation. So, So uh, yeah, so this is uh, the main thing uh, uh, here, but the problem is depending on a particular mass parameter, uh, it's important to solve this kind of equation, but which is not possible always because uh, solve, solve means I want to mean the analytical solution, obviously. So here are a few techniques uh, uh, people used in the context of condensed matter theory and uh, that technique is called quantum quench. So this quantum quench is a protocol in which one prepare a quantum system in an eigenstate of the Hamiltonian and then have the same system evolve dynamically with time under a different Hamiltonian. And after that, the system thermalize and this particular phenomena is called quench. Uh, this is one example. Now consider a quantum system in its ground state, turn on the time dependent parameter, which is gt, and uh, wait up to the time t equal to t1. And uh, you will see that, uh, like uh, this coupling parameter will change like that. So I want to use this transition phenomena of this coupling parameter to find out the solution of the previous equation that I have pointed. So how that can be done? Let's understand how that can be done. So as I have told you that the solution uh, cannot be performed with any arbitrary time dependent mass profile. You have to have some specific feature. So this is kind of a feature where you can able to solve your problem or it might be like some kind of step function where you can able to solve. So, you have some quantum system which in, uh, in the pre-quenched state. Now you apply this quench protocol and after uh, application of this quench protocol, you will see that your system gets thermalized and you will get some possible quantum states which you actually use to study the find out, uh, find out the correlation uh, in the post coin state, as well as you also use the, uh, this uh, information to solve the equation of motion that I have pointed earlier. So uh, here, uh, like in vacuum can, also, can be written in terms of the out in this way. And uh, here this gamma is basically the, uh, this, this beta alpha is the, uh, Bogolyov of coefficients, and this gamma can be defined in the ratio of that. Now you can actually write down in a little bit, uh, uh, like you can actually use, uh, you can actually decompose this factor into two parts, and you can uh, rename this parameter which is momentum dependent like that. Now if you do that, then you will actually define two possible states which is called Calabrese-Cardi, and one, another one is a generalized Calabrese-Cardi, which is actually uh, taking care of the thermalization of the post-quantum quantum quenched 
state. And this kappa parameter, you can actually calculate for different, different quints uh, from this relation. If you know actually the uh, Bogolyov of coefficients, then you actually put it and you can actually calculate this states. Now you can ask me how you can calculate this Bogolyov of coefficients. This you can actually calculate from the solutions. Now the solution you can actually calculate depending on the mass profile, whether uh, if it is uh, exactly solvable, then it is very good. Otherwise, you can actually use different kind of approximation methods. One of the possible approximation method is WKB. You can use that and actually compute this beta alpha. And uh, from that, you can actually uh, identify this parameter kappa. So like for GCC, Calabrese Cardi, and uh, this in vacuum, these are the form of the parameter kappa people can calculate. Now, using this, if you want to calculate this uh, shy zero, I actually want to mean the uh, post uh, quenched state. If you want to calculate the two point correlation functions, then you will see that in three dimension and four dimension, the solution can be written in the, the, the correlations can be written in this way. Though I am actually interested in the d equal to four because I have a plan to do cosmology out of that. So d equal to four is important for my purpose. And this here some parameter I have introduced r, which is basically taking care of the distance between the point x1 and x2. Can I ask a question? Yeah. Uh, okay, so you take your, uh, Post, so you, so you, 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 you dial the mass, and then uh, you look at the state after you've dialed the mass. And the first thing you showed us is basically how do I write that so that it looks like a Boltzmann factor times something else? And that's yeah. what you mean by thermalization? Yeah. But I mean, it's not necessarily a thermal distribution. That's only the case where it kappa. Is the same for every K, or what, like what do you mean by thermalization? Kappa one, uh, you want to mean this parameter? Yeah, I, I guess it just seems like on the previous slide, you, you, you're basically just writing an arbitrary state in a way that looks like a Boltzmann factor times. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I like, think this. Yeah, at the end, right? So psi not equals some, zero in equals e to the minus some, you know. Mm -hmm. So, so I, I want arbitrary, right? This is for any yeah coefficients I want to write down. You can write down, but the by thermalization. Then. But the, uh, you're just writing the state in a way that it looks like a Boltzmann factor times something else. Uh, like I want to mean that uh, even whatever you have said, it is right. But here, this kappa parameter is not uh, actually. Uh, like for different different states, the states I have pointed, it's different actually. Like, and this can be actually calculated from the different mass, time dependent mass profiles that I have uh, pointed. Like, if you know the particular m as a function of t, then from that actually you can actually calculate. Uh, because if you know m equal m as a function of t, then you can actually calculate the solution. And from the solution, you can calculate the Bogolyubov coefficients. From the Bogolyubov coefficients, you can calculate the gamma. And from gamma, you can actually calculate this parameter kappa. So I want to mean that depending on the um, time-dependent mass profile, you can actually get thermalization. And it is not possible to get thermalization for all kind of time-dependent mass profile. But if you have certain specific Featured in the mass profile, one of the possible possibilities, if you have a, some quasi-static change at around t equal to zero, suppose, or maybe if it is a stiff function, so then you can actually calculate it. And but what do you mean by thermal? So I write my state like this. What does it mean for this to be thermal? Because I can write any state like this. So does every does every mass change? count as thermalization, or is there some specific form? Like CC means it's thermalized, but GCC means it's not. I guess I just don't understand what we mean by something having a thermal distribution in this context. OK, I will just skip right now. I will just. Sure. 
address this question a little bit later because uh, yeah, I have to think. So next, uh, uh, you can actually calculate uh, this uh, other correlators, uh, which is like uh, time derivative of the phi as well as uh, and also uh, like if you actually calculate with respect to the state I have introduced GCC from there actually you also calculate and uh, for this in state you can also calculate the two-point function I just uh -huh. So, uh, so these are the profiles I want to uh, use for this kind of calculation and uh, um, this is the um, effective mass and the corresponding impurity potential looks like this. Um, And uh, here for particular one example, if you want to calculate the solution, you can actually calculate it in terms of some in modes and out. And from that actually you can calculate the Bogolyov of coefficients, alphas and betas that I have pointed. And from these alphas, betas, you can actually calculate the states that I have pointed earlier. Also, apart from that, you can actually calculate some optical properties, chaotic property, and the conduction property of the electrical conduction wear. If you say that it's electrical wear, then uh, it, it can be related to, uh, through the, this uh, Bogolyov of coefficient like that. And these are the, some behavior with respect to the momentum modes. Now, I will talk about something uh, different, which is called the out of time ordered correlations. And out of time ordered correlation is actually defined like that. Uh, here, basically, T and T prime is not written in a time ordered form. It's proposed by uh, these two people in 1968. And uh, I just want to point that it is not actually a time ordered correlator that we people uh, used to uh, write like that, where like either T1 is greater than or equal to T2, it's like that, or maybe some uh, like the opposite thing. Um, so what it actually is. So this can actually be calculated like uh, using uh, the schwinger keldish path integral formalism and uh, like uh, like if you have some operator O, uh, you want to calculate OT, OT prime, OT uh, and OT prime like that, then actually you can uh, use, uh, using this contour, you can actually write down, uh, uh, consider your operator uh, in the this uh, right, uh, uh, right contour side as well as the left contour side. So this, this I have uh, actually drawn the picture, if you want to calculate this correlation function from this picture at zero temperature, but in, uh, kind, in, in the case of finite temperature, you have to actually do a little bit more. You have to introduce some additional, uh, uh, some uh, parameter beta naught, which you would use to calculate this uh, path integral. Uh, and from that, you can actually compute this correlation function using schwinger keldish now, why this uh, uh, out of time ordered correlators? So these uh, actually uh, people used in different different contexts. Uh, that uh, paper I have pointed, Maldasina, uh, Stephen Schenker, and uh, Stanford, they pointed uh, that the Lyapunov exponent, which actually measured the chaoticity of the system. And for uh, that kind of system, they have shown that the upper bound is 2 pi by beta, where beta is 1 by t. And this actually uh, a test for black hole horizon, they have pointed. Also, this can be treated as a probe of quantum chaos, like pointed here. And also like thermalization phenomena, and typical like transport phenomena, uh, quantum dynamics. And uh, like, uh, this is my uh, main uh, 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 area of study, I just want to point that this can also be connected 
through uh, to cosmology maybe in the phase of reheating where systems uh, the quantum system you are considering is not in equilibrium so yeah so uh, in non equilibrium physics out of time ordered correlator is actually defined as the thermal average of the uh, square of the commutator where w and v are separated by a time scale uh, uh, a time scale uh, uh, and the time difference is suppose t or tau, whatever. And uh, this can be written uh, as this one by partition function traces trace of this. And this is for Hermitian W and V. If it is not Hermitian, then you can actually uh, write down this thing in a, a little bit different way, but yeah, almost same. Z is the partition function and this xt, uh, Sorry, this is not xt, uh, whatever, like wt or xt, whatever. This can be written in a Heisenberg picture. And this beta is 1 by t. And I have set uh, the Boltzmann constant to be 1. And the, this h is the Hamiltonian of the system that you were interested in. You can also write down this thing in terms of the density matrices, where this thermal density matrix is 1 by z to the power minus beta h. Now this OTOC actually captures the effect of perturbation by a operator V0 on the later time measurement on the operator W tau. And the two point function, uh, so you can ask me why I haven't used just only a commutator or maybe why I haven't uh, 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 written this uh, OTOC in terms of a three point function or maybe some uh, some odd point function. So two point function is not allowed because it uh, decays with time and it uh, decays very fast. So we don't consider this kind of uh, observable. Uh, three point function can be set to be zero using uh, the kubo martin Schwinger uh, condition, which is basically uh, tells you the time translational symmetry and using that you can actually set this three point function to be zero. And uh, like uh, similarly, you can show that all odd point functions uh, vanish using KMS. So uh, like uh, the first uh, uh, good estimator is the four point function, which is basically the square of the commutator. And uh, like uh, any even point like uh, six, eight and all you can actually consider. Now, just if you take the n equal to 2, and you can actually uh, open this commutator bracket, you can actually write down in this way. Now, if you wait for a long time, uh, then you can actually write, and this uh, time scale, we call it the dissipation time scale. We will see that you can actually simplify this uh, four-point functions a bit, and uh, normalize this uh, correlation function in this way. So it's just nothing but the same thing, but we have defined in a little bit simpler way, provided uh, we have taken uh, this dissipation time scale limit. For chaotic systems, you can actually see that the behavior of this uh, normalized uh, OTOC actually looks like this. And uh, uh, you will see that uh, like from uh, this, you can actually calculate this lambda L, which is the Lyapunov exponent. And this Lyapunov exponent, I have told you, is bounded by 2 pi by beta. And uh, if you use this fact, then you can actually constrain this uh, uh, particular factor, which has to be less than 1 by n square e to the power 2 pi t by beta. And this is true for chaotic any kind of chaotic OTOC. But yeah, if your uh, system is not chaotic, uh, like then also you can actually calculate OTOC, but for chaotic, the feature has to be like e to the power some, uh, some factor times t, and that factor actually taking care of the uh, Lyapunov exponent, the degree of chaoticity. So th uh, this is the old paper that I have uh, told that these uh, guys have pointed how to compute OTOC uh, for some kind of uh, 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 superconducting system. I'm not going to this, but yeah, I'm just pointing out this is the very old paper they have actually first pointed. Then uh, 
like using this uh, OTOC, you can actually study a few semi-classical limits. At very early time scale, if you consider two operators like X and Y like that, then you can actually calculate the OT normalized OTOC is this. And you can actually calculate the semi-classical limit, which is basically uh, the Poisson bracket. And uh, from this, you can actually calculate uh, that how uh, the, uh, the how this correlation function actually scales uh, decays with time. So this time scale is computed as one by lambda uh, uh, log times a b, where these a and b factors are appearing here. And like uh, if you have like n uh, n number of degrees of freedom present in the system, then it actually scales with log l log n by lambda l i will not talk about this because this is yeah i just want to point this this is a very well known example this is nothing to do with cosmology but this is uh, like for last 3 4 years this is very um, uh, well studied model syk where uh, uh, for a Hamil uh, the Hamiltonian can be written in terms of a uh, uh, few Majorana fermions, and this is a random coupling, and this is the two-point function of this random coupling. This one-point function is zero, and uh, these Majorana fermions are defined with psi i, psi j, anti-commutator is delta i j. So from this kind of system, you can actually calculate this four-point function Similarly, like that I have pointed here, and uh, people have pointed that this kind of system is maximally chaotic and it follows the behavior that I have pointed, some constant <coughs> minus some factor times e to the power 2 pi t by beta. And yeah, like if you just normalize this thing, you can actually write in a little bit better form. So the, uh, uh, these uh, people actually computed this thing in the context of holography and uh, pointed uh, that this is like, uh, this, this kind of system is basically a maximally chaotic system. Uh, I will not talk about, it. yeah. So for har harmonic oscillator, why I'm giving harmonic oscillator? Because if you just neglect the time dependence of the evolution equation that I have pointed, it basically a equ equation of motion of a harmonic oscillator. So for the simplest case for harmonic oscillator, if you calculate, uh, then you can uh, like for classically, if you use the Poisson bracket and for semi-classical case, if you calculate with the this uh, square of the commutator, then you will see that for both the cases, the result will be cos square omega t. But uh, like in the case of cosmology, only the difference appears because uh, the, uh, uh, the frequency is basically time dependent. And due to this fact, uh, in this case, you have to calculate this uh, type of correlators, like phi, phi t pi, the canonically conjugate momentum, phi phi or pi pi, or in terms of uh, like uh, some gauge invariant variables like zeta and associated momentum pi, you can also calculate the similar thing. And this is kind of one of the probes we can calculate uh, in the context of cosmology uh, to understand the correlations during reheating. And uh, I, I want to point that during uh, reheating, we actually don't talk about too much about the correlation functions. So this is kind of uh, like uh, uh, one calculation people do in this context, which is a kind of a new calculation. Yeah, but it is borrowed from, uh, the technique is borrowed from the condensed matter theory. Yeah, but this can be used. So I'm not pointing the result how to calculate this kind of correlation function uh, because uh, I'm doing this calculation right now. And uh, so I will uh, point this uh, calculation very soon in this work, which I will post in archive very soon. And uh, this is the next uh, one where you don't know anything about the uh, interaction. That means the impurity potential and you don't know how to write down the Lagrangian properly. So in that case, you can actually consider few uh, various statistical ensembles. And uh, uh, in that kind of statistical uh, 
ensembles if the Hamiltonian is time reversal symmetric uh, then uh, the required distribution will be invariant under orthogonal transformation else it is invariant under unitary transformation and in the large n limit which is we call the thermodynamic limit eigenvalue of the density of the random matrices showed universal behavior and it is characterized by something called Wigner semicircle row and these results seem to be applicable in varied class of quantum systems and uh, like in general you can write down uh, this Wigner Dyson type uh, distribution for this eigenvalues and here this gamma parameter uh, 1 for Gaussian orthogonal and uh, 2 for unitary and uh, 4 for symplectic. So this is the identification people use in the literature. So <clears throat> so this Wigner Dyson, Dyson type statistical ensembles are three kinds or GOE, GUE and GSE which has this kind of properties and now the joint probability distribution for such random matrix can be written in this way. Here uh, you see that this M is the random matrix I am talking about and this is if you transform this uh, M under some unitary similarity transformation then you will see that under this transformation this P will be invariant. Uh, it, it might be orthogonal or unitary maybe uh, depending on this whether this is a uh, Gaussian orthogonal or Gaussian unitary or symplectic whatever. And here N actually represents the rank of the random matrix M. Apart from that there are few more uh, statistical ensembles which call circular orthogonal, circular unitary and circular symplectic. And uh, for this kind of system if you no uh, uh, like partition function then from that you can calculate everything but for this partition function you actually need to understand what this uh, the distribution of the random matrices. So for this uh, uh, to understand this uh, distribution of the random matrices you can actually write down the measure dm in terms of the eigenvalues and uh, this lambdas uh, are the like uh, uh, the eigenvalues of this random matrix m multiplied with a factor which is coming from the Haar measure. Now this uh, particular uh, integral measure can be, uh, uh, can be categorized into two families. One is the Di Wigner Dyson that I have pointed. Another one is the Atlan uh, Zinnenbauer ensemble. And for both the cases you can actually write down DM in a different way. So using this information you can actually uh, write down your uh, partition function and uh, from this partition function you can actually using the saddle point technique you can actually calculate uh, you can actually calculate the distribution of the random matrices uh, uh, for any kind of general ensemble. Um, uh, here n is some, some kind of uh, representing the degree of the polynomial with, with, which may be anything. And uh, see here it involves few uh, arbitrary coefficients a's. Now these a's can be calculated uh, using the uh, met method of resol resolvent uh, uh, which we usually calculate uh, uh, in the con uh, which we actually use in the context of complex uh, analysis and for uh, this uh, particularly in the context of holomorphic function and uh, uh, using this you can actually fix this coefficients a and uh, that will actually uh, uh, tells you finally that what the random distribution is. So here are few papers I am pointing which are very useful uh, people have written recently. Uh, uh, to understand about this ensembles and it's some application in the context of gravity and this is uh, some uh, old uh, like uh, review if you want to understand more about random matrices. This is also a book and uh, yeah so like I'm just giving these references for like for 
if you want to study more uh, regarding this random matrices, then it would be a very nice option. Now, using this, you can actually define two-point function. And this two-point function, you can actually calculate for, uh, I am using particularly unitary ensemble, Gaussian unitary, because it is very simple. So this uni for unitary in ensemble, this two-point functions can be written in terms of something called spectral form factor. And this spectral form factor, uh, uh, yeah, so our aim is to actually determine the spectral form factor for different, different cosmological problems, time dependent, in presence of time dependent couplings. Similarly, you can also calculate the four point function. And here you also see that uh, I have generalized the result, which is like any two point Gaussian unitary ensemble out of time ordered correlation function for uh, can be written in this way, where you need to know about this uh, spectral form factor. And uh, uh, like one can show that this, if you take the average over this uh, correlations, then you can actually see that this averaged uh, uh, out of time ordered correlation is actually proportional to this uh, two point spectral form factors. So the other factors will actually go after taking the average. And uh, yeah, so I will just Yeah, so we just, uh -huh. so like, now you can ask me how to calculate the spectral form factor. So spectral form factor uh, uh, can be calculated from this two point functions. So this two point function is written in terms of the disconnected and connected part. So disconnected part can be written in this way for the Gaussian unitary. And uh, you can also calculate the, calculate the uh, uh, connected part. And I have taken this distribution that I have pointed earlier. And uh, you can calculate each of the part for uh, Gaussian unitary. And finally, you will get, I'm just showing the final result. Uh, sorry. So finally, you will get uh, something called, uh, this kind of contribution uh, added with some other part that I have written in the previous slide. Now, I have taken one example. So if you have this kind of random potential, which is like, uh, like m square plus m to the power four, for that the random distribution looks like this. And here, you can actually calculate this spectral form factor, time dependent spectral form factor. And these are the behavior. This is the behavior of this two point function at very early time. And at late time, it will saturate to a particular value. And we found that this saturation value is basically one by pi n. And uh, like uh, uh, also the lower bound is minus one by n, minus one by one minus pi. So we, found that spectral form factor is bounded between these two values, the lower bound and the upper bound, for any values of beta lying from zero to infinity. And the last thing I have to point, the last thing is uh, the, it's basically the probabilistic measure I want to uh, comment on that. So here uh, the particle, uh, 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 like the probability density for particle position of Brownian motion in a random system can be expressed in this way. Now, for any kind of Markov process, you can write down this equation in a little bit simpler way. Uh, and uh, like, uh, if you just like consider particularly uh, the time derivative of this kind of probability distribution, then you can actually write down the, in a kind of a Taylor expansion form. It looks like this. And uh, from that, if you uh, apply the maximum entropy ansatz, then you can actually get rid of some uh, 
some additional factors involved in this expansion and you will see that this probability at uh, like uh, of uh, getting n number of particles between tau and tau plus d tau is basically uh, the average probability distribution of getting n plus delta n uh, number of particles within the interval uh, d, d tau. Now, if you use this fact and uh, like expand both the side in Taylor series and equate the coefficients of delta tau and uh, delta tau square and all, you will get something called some evolution equation. And this evolution equation uh, is called the Fokker-Planck equation. And uh, from that, actually, you can actually calculate this probability distribution. You can ch check that what kind of probability distribution your particle production process follow. So uh, if you just consider the equate the coefficients of delta tau, you will see that the solution looks like that, which is uh, pretty looks like Gaussian. And if you consider the higher order terms like uh, the delta tau square and delta tau cube, it uh, have some very complicated solutions. I'm not going to that. But if you add them all and get something like corrected distribution, you will see that it is. it looks like uh, Gaussian, but there are small, small fluctuation involved in this uh, probability distribution profile. And it's, uh, it's uh, basically tell, telling you the fact that the, uh, the non-Gaussianity involved in this uh, NKT, NKT prime, NKT double, uh, triple prime, NK is basically the uh, uh, like uh, particle production rate at particular momentum K. So if you calculate the three point function, the non-Gaussianity involved in this kind of thing is com larger compared to the primordial non-Gaussianity that we actually calculate in zeta KT, zeta KT prime and zeta KT double prime. So uh, that's the information you can actually extract. So I want to mean that the particle production actually enhances the amount of non-Gaussianity uh, a bit uh, compared to the primordial non-Gaussianity. And from this, you can actually also calculate the stat moments, the first order, second order, and third order moments to check whether how much non-Gaussianity is involved in this kind of calculations. And uh, uh, if you put that, then you can actually, uh, if you use the uh, 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 corrected Fokker-Planck equations, then you can uh, actually calculate these moments, uh, expectation value of n, expectation value of n squared, and so on. And you will see that the variance and uh, skewness and the kurtosis uh, can be written in this, uh, can, can be computed in this way, where you see that, uh, 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 like, uh, if for large time, the amount of uh, non-Gaussianity is actually increasing for this kind of uh, system here, and where we actually basically uh, set uh, this parameter mu, which is appearing in the probability distribution, as unity, and maybe you can get some other solutions for different different parameters. And uh, I will just finish. It's like almost finished my talk. Eh? So uh, there are two uh, formalism. Uh, one is called Ito, and another one is a Stratonovich. Both of them are used to uh, understand the this kind of probability distributions. This Ito and Stratnum, which both of them gives you the similar type of solutions, which is like, uh, like a peak and then it uh, decays with time. And this is basically done at zero temperature. Uh, this is the same thing, uh, because I have written the same thing in a more generalized form. I'm not yeah, but at finite temperature, you can actually calculate the Fokker-Planck equation as well. And uh, for a given profile, if you have some effective uh, uh, distribution, which is like we have taken the Gaussian distribution n squared, then you can actually see the uh, profile with uh, at finite temperature is not uh, uh, exactly like 
peak and then there is a decay, you have some certain kind of features depending on the temperature. So yeah, so we have certain kind of features which shows like, yeah, like uh, this is uh, uh, like at finite temperature, you can you surely get some deviation of non-gaussianities and uh, which is not very small actually. Now conclusions and uh, yeah, so I conclude with uh, the fact that I have actually tried to connect this particle production in cosmology with a conduction phenomena in electrical wear with an impurity. We have, act I have actually tried to uh, uh, show that how this uh, can be done with a random matrix theory where you don't know anything about the interaction. And if you know the interaction, then how uh, you can solve this kind of problem in the context of quantum field theory that I have also shown. Uh, apart from that, I have actually pointed that how you study the dynamics of this particle creation and understand the probability distribution of the particle creation in terms of solving the Fokker Planck equation. And uh, this kind of bound we got, which is the two point function uh, like uh, in random systems with a time dependent mass parameter. Uh, where we got the two point function uh, for this out of time ordered system uh, lies between these two values. And uh, like we actually tried to see that if we introduce the higher order corrections in the Fokker Planck equation, how that will change uh, the uh, like probability distribution, whether it is pointing towards large non Gaussianity or not. And there are few future prospects you can do. So that I have already shown that I'm trying to compute OTOC in uh, DC ter. And uh, you can uh, also study because this is a very hot topic in black hole physics right now as well. And like uh, application of this uh, uh, out of equilibrium physics in the context of quantum entanglement and uh, how this is connected with cosmology in the early universe particularly, you can also study. And this is also very not well understood. I want to study more uh, this quench and eigenstate thermalization. And uh, last one is the open system that I have pointed in my first slide. And uh, this few works we did recently uh, uh, do, uh, on the same direction uh, for the open system and uh, like uh, we are trying to understand how this kind of out of equilibrium behavior can be used in the context of open uh, specific kind of open quantum system. We have used some two body systems and we are trying to understand whether this can be suitable thing to study in the context of cosmology or not. And uh, uh, like towards this uh, quantum information thing like quantum entanglement, we have written few more works earlier uh, on the same direction where uh, we have studied uh, the uh, Bell's inequality violation in the context of uh, primordial cosmology and uh, like, like quantum entanglement uh, with some, some specific axionic type theories. Uh, these two works, thank you. I ask, I didn't quite follow it. What, what, what do you hope to learn about the sitter by calculating the, this out of time ordered correlator there? Yeah, so like, uh, it's, it's not, it's like, if I want to calculate in, uh, like, in the epoch of reheating, so it's not exactly de the uh, like, scale factor is something a little bit different. But yeah, like I want to study the out of time order correlations, uh, particularly during the ep epoch of reheating. To, to, and you would get, you would get what? So you would, you would calculate them and then that would, what would you infer from it? No, I, I like from this I want to study that how uh, the correlation functions behave with the time. And that actually connected to uh, like, so I have shown three different three things actually here. 
first one is basically uh, uh, trying to understand the correlation functions if you know the uh, particularly the time dependent couplings and uh, then you can actually how you can study those kind of systems second i have shown that if you don't know the time dependent coupling then how you can use uh, uh, random matrix theory to understand uh, this kind of correlations third i have shown that uh, 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 like if you just don't go with this thing if you just are trying to understand that how much uh, uh, particle production happen and what like what kind of probabilistic behavior it follows during the evolution of the time scale uh, and how uh, that can be like it will enhance the non non gaussianity or not that i have studied so this th these are three different things that i have studied here so not particularly uh, like uh, like uh, whatever you are pointing that uh, particularly d seater space i don't want to study like that but yeah i try i am trying to understand like uh, mostly we study the cosmological correlations uh, like during inflation or maybe up to the scale of cmb or maybe some later scale like uh, large scale structure or something like that but we don't need to we don't talk about mostly about the reheating that phase is something missing and like i want to understand what exactly a quantum phenomena happening during this particular epoch so uh, it's my belief that out of equilibrium physics plays significant role because particularly that phase is uh, particularly at that time physics is going out of equilibrium so like i'm like borrowing few tools from condensed matter to calculate how to uh, quantify this quantum correlations during this epoch so i can't say more right now because uh, i'm calculating those things but i'm very hopeful that that can be actually connected to something which you can measure in different probes in future so i can give you that kind of uh, future direction but uh, uh, as far as right now this is kind of a theoretical calculation obviously because i am not actually connect i haven't connected through any kind of observational probe but i'm very hopeful that uh, this kind of calculation is important and had have to be done because it is not uh, yet done uh, in this particular literature yeah so how how would we determine through observation whether this is actually connected to Yeah. obviously so uh, you are very uh, right that like whatever i'm computing here that has to be some observational significance otherwise i can't comment that that can be measured or something like that but yeah like uh, as uh, i have pointed like if you uh, uh, so like once we do the calculation for inflation and all we try to connect it with something called cmb physics and there are various probes we know planck w map these that people use and have commented that whether the non gaussian it is observed in cmb maps small or large whatever here the thing is uh, this correlation functions that i am talking about some way because see uh, this people used to say like that that if you have some kind of seed in the early universe that will grow with time and you get the large scale structure so i want to mean that even if uh, reheating is uh, in between that also connected with this seed the early universe seed so i want to point that this kind of out of time order cor correlation functions somehow can be written in terms of the correlation function that we actually try to probe in cmb or some other observational probes we're making that connection is still a hard point yeah it's not very easy it's not very easy i I'm, i'm it's i'm hopeful to connect because that there has to be some connection but yeah how that can be done i don't know i'm trying to understand that part in maybe since for a little hour we maybe Okay, great. Well, thank you, Sanjay.